Hello friends. Happy Saturday. It's been raining all morning and that's kind of not as bright and cheery, but you know, it's spring finally and I would much rather it be raining than snowing, so it is okay. Check out how long my hair is now. Alright, moving on from that riveting topic. I realize that it's normal to still be learning how to be a friend when you're in college. Mainly because you're building different types of relationships than you did in high school. But I was still learning how to be any kind of friend that wasn't a terrible one. And I don't think that's as normal as learning how to be a better friend. Whenever clouds start gathering to cover up the sun, it really doesn't mean a thing to me. When I was a teenager, I really wanted to be close friends with people. But I was also dealing with this unknown issue at the time. I constantly obsessed over my friendships. And I don't mean like wondering whether people liked me, although I did deal with that later in life. What I'm referring to is connected more to the way I was thinking about people, specific people. There were certain friends, and not all of them, just specific ones, that I would be very possessive of, and I didn't recognize it. Like, there were a few times when I would see that I was doing it and feel guilty for mistreating a friend. Usually after that friend called me out on it or very clearly was uncomfortable with being around me. And then I would realize what I was doing and back off for a while. But I also just didn't recognize how often it was happening. And now that I've actually processed what was happening, I go back and forth between really heavy guilt for treating people like that and just embarrassment. So in case you still aren't sure what I'm talking about, basically, especially in early high school and early college, those were the two very specific instances I'm thinking of. I had a friend whom I wanted to be best friends with and at the time, best friends meant something very different to me than the other person's definition. Now that I'm out of college, I have a few very close friends and one best friend, and I would never trade any of them for anyone else. And one of the reasons why I have those people is they were willing to stick it out through my learning experience with friendships. But in high school and as a freshman in college, the friends that I chose did not stick it out. Some of them just couldn't handle me <laughs> because I was too possessive and obsessive about our friendship and being friends with other people. And as a result of that, I lost those friendships. And I think the hardest part for me now is recognizing that I didn't know why they didn't want to be friends with me anymore because I didn't understand who I was and what I was doing. I was that obsessive friend that people try to push away because they're uncomfortable, but they don't know how to push them away because they're always there. And they're such an affectionate, loving person as well that it's impossible to just say, no, I don't want to spend time with you because you don't want to hurt their feelings. That was me. And because I was that person, and didn't recognize it, 
I did so much damage to those friendships. The person I was friends with in high school who dealt with this completely blocked me out for a year and then we reconciled in a way, but we were never close friends again. And now we see each other maybe once a year when we're both home at church. And she lives across the country. She's married. She has a life and has best friends from our church that I was never good friends with. There were some people who invested time in me when I was first at Northwestern and then withdrew that investment as quickly as they had given it. And those people are whom I would never consider my friends again. Especially because I realized that unlike the first time when the friendship was reconciled but never the same, this time those people just abandoned me. Yes, I was still an obsessive and possessive friend and I deserved to have something change. But no one ever deserves to be completely abandoned by somebody. I usually try to block out the entirety of my freshman year. When I go through my Facebook memories, I usually delete the majority of my posts from that year because I would like to just forget that year ever existed in my life. There were a few good things that happened that year like deciding to become a journalism minor or kind of meeting some people who I spent time with later or getting published. Those were great things and I will always remember those things. But the rest of it from August 2012 till May 2013, I would love for it to just be completely eliminated from the timeline in my life because then I don't have to remember those people. Or how much of a fool I made of myself by trying to stay connected with those people when they didn't care. So this isn't me trying to hate on those people. They're all good people. They just... I don't know if they knew what they were doing. This video is clearly just me saying these people were the worst, which is so divisive and unloving. So I'm sorry, because in order to be transparent when you're talking about life experience, you have to talk about the life experience that was negative. And that is the most negative part of my existence so far. I love you guys. Thanks for paying attention and caring, even though this project is not really that significant or high quality. Yeah. Till tomorrow.